Hey, what's up? My name's Austin. You may or may not have seen me on the YouTube channel Make Pop Music before, but today I'm here with Cubase because I had the privilege of doing a demo project for Cubase 12, and I wanted to do a small little series where I kind of walk you through the project, and we're going to do one video where I kind of show you how everything is set up, how I lay out my template, what routing I've chosen, then we're going to do another video where I show you some of the production tips and tools and techniques that I've used, and then a third video where I show you some of the mixing tips, tools, and techniques that I've used. So this will be the first video. We're going to go ahead and navigate the project. If you haven't already, feel free to download and pull up this project. It is with Cubase 12, so if you want to see kind of what a pop song looks like only using Cubase stock tools, uh, instruments, plugins, samples, everything like that, Pull it up and check it out so you can follow along. Now that we are actually inside the session, here is what it looks like. As you can see, everything's nice. It's color coordinated. Um, it's not a super, super huge project, but it's not small. We're at 77 tracks total after all of our sins, um, instrument tracks, audio tracks, everything. So right now, you'll kind of see that I set up my sessions in a super particular way. I've got a little section up here where I have my marker so you can see that we've, you know, delegated intro, verse 1A, verse 1B pre-chorus, chorus, and then there is a post-chorus over here. And then what I also tend to have is a tempo track up at the top. So for this demo project, we chose 168. It's a pretty upbeat kind of 80s inspired pop song. And then what I do is I'll just put a little track divider right here. So uh, you can open this as much as you want, but if I scroll, my marker and my tempo track will stay put. That way I can kind of always have this up top. Now, outside of that, you'll see that everything is kind of divided up into uh, specific sections and color combinations. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with what some of the folders and some of the general routing is. So you'll see right here that we have a big folder that's called main drums. This is where I have things like kicks, snares, claps, hi-hats, anything that would kind of be on a real kick that would get stemmed out as a real drum kit is going to be under this little group. And as you can see right here, we have a group track that's called main drums that all of these different channels are routed to. And I just keep that at the top of my bus just so as I am producing. If I want to bus process anything, it's right here. If I want to automate it, I have the bus right here. And it kind of just all falls under this color coordinated folder. So here's all of the drums I'll put together. And this to me is kind of the way that I set up my session with every single uh, style of instrument. So we have main drums right here in the yellow, and then I'll do auxiliary drums right here in like orange. And typically what that is, is just extra loops, extra little fills, um, any kind of like rising drum hit, any kind of reverse snare, anything like that. And the reason that I'll kind of do main drums and aux drums is so at the end of a session, when I want to print the stems for an artist to use live or print them for a remix or for sync or something like that, uh, we've got everything stemmed out. So we've got our main drums right here that'll be on a stem. We've got our aux drums under a stem. And then everything just kind of folds into these collapsible folders really, really simply. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the structure is going to be folder, pick a color, group project that everything in that folder gets routed to. And then uh, we just kind of scale it down according to uh, how I like to produce things. So we'll go main drums, auxiliary drums, effects tracks. So again, things like risers, hits, swells, everything like that will be in this little pink folder. And that all gets routed to this effects group. And then same thing with our bases, we've got bass for blue. So again, group track right here, leveled at a zero. We've got some bus processing on this that we'll talk about in a later video. And uh, as you can see, I like to kind of coordinate my sessions where I will structure them as things come in. So if I know that I'm going to, you know, look for a sense sound that comes in on the second verse, I can kind of at least have a visual representation of where it's going to come in. All of the synths will wind up being in green and they'll wind up in the synth bus. So again, I can do any kind of bus processing. And then same thing, guitars will all be in teal, routed to this guitar bus. And then my lead vocals, that's going to be things like the main vocal, the main vocal track to again, pan left and right, any creative vocal effects, that'll all be in purple. And I tend to have a harmonies bus and an ooze and oz bus, but I didn't do too many harmonies or ooze and oz on this uh, demo production. I've just left them there, so if you want to copy my template, you can. But all of these tracks will end up winding up in this lead vocals bus as well, with just a little bit of bus processing. So that tends to be my main setup for... Uh, virtual instrument tracks, audio tracks, tempo, marker, all of that kind of stuff. And these all come out into their own buses. So at the end of the session, I've got main drums, aux drums, effects, bass, synth, guitar, lead vocals, and then harmonies and oohs and ahs. So I can send that, stem that out super easy for an artist. And I even go a step farther and I've got some um, like subgroup tracks right here. So this all drums track is where the auxiliary drums and the main drums will come together. So all of the drums end up there. And then we have a drum and bass track that will feed in from that all drums 
and from the bass bus. So this is really good if you want to do any processing where you're going to process the drums and the, you know, actual bass together in terms of like compression or if you want to do any filter sweeps or anything like that. And then very similarly, I have all of the vocals. So lead vocals, harmonies, oohs and ahs, background vocals, all of the vocal sends and everything that ends up in this vocals all bus. And then sensing guitars, again, like it sounds, all of the sensing guitars wind up here. And then everything all at the end ends up in this master bus right here. And the reason that I have a master bus right here is I just find it a little bit easier for me to automate and kind of see everything all at once with it just being right under my session and color coded. You could just use the automatic output that your DAW configuration will have. However, I find this super intuitive and super seamless. And then this is what just gets printed when I bounce a master export. So that's pretty much all of my main things. The only things we didn't really address are some of my effects channels. Um, so in Cubase, they're called effects. You might also know them as sins or, uh, you know, parallel tracks or anything like that. So I left all of the ones that I use in here. They're not all being used in this demo session. So we have a drums parallel. There's nothing set up on it because I didn't use it. Vocal parallel compression also didn't use it. Vocal parallel widening didn't use it. So you don't really need to know those. And then we'll talk about what's on these in the mixing video in this series. But what you should know is if they are a vocal send, which all of the ones used in this demo project are, they're going to wind up in that all vocals bus. So even at the end, as I print this lead vocal stem out, it's not going to have all of the reverb and the delay printed on. They would have to either go to the all vocals bus or they can go ahead and just grab the actual sense that I have exported. So that's pretty much how you navigate the session. I know it can look kind of complicated if you're new, especially to Cubase. However, I find it pretty intuitive to go ahead and section things out in terms of like what group they belong in. Put a folder there so you can collapse them really easily and navigate your session really easily. Get a bus there so you have complete mixability and stem export ability. And then that's pretty much it. That's how the whole session looks. Now that we've seen all of that, we can actually start talking about some of the production moves in the next video. Stay